With the fifth pick in the 2010 NBA Draft, the Sacramento Kings select DeMarcus Cousins from the University of Kentucky. Imagine this is you. You work your entire life to get to the NBA. You make an immediate impact on your team. You become a four-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA, get traded for virtually nothing. Injuries, personal demons, where you go from making possibly nine figures to not even having a job. Going from team to team to team to team with little to no impact. Today, we'll be taking a look at the rise and fall of one of the best centers of the 2010 DeMarcus Cousins. As I said previously, Cousins was taken 5th overall in the 2010 NBA Draft by the Sacramento Kings. His Kentucky Wildcat teammate, John Wall, was taken 1st overall by the Wizards in that same draft. This would prove to be one of the better draft day decisions in Kings history, as they have passed on players who would later become all-stars to draft players who, despite how harsh it sounds, didn't have the ability to succeed in the NBA. Recent examples include the Kings passing up on future 5-time all-star and 3-time NBA champion Klay Thompson for college standout Jimmer Fredette, who came off of a red-hot March Madness run. Fredette played for a few teams, including my Knicks, but never caught fire anywhere. Sacramento also passed up on another future five-time All-Star and four-time All-NBA Honors recipient Damian Lillard for Thomas Robinson back in 2013. Similar to Jimmer, Robinson would play for several teams, but was ultimately out of the NBA by the time he was 26 years old. In Cousins' first year in the league, he averaged 14 points, 8.5 rebounds, 2.5 assists, a steal, and a little under a block in just under 29 minutes a game, while earning first-team All-Rookie honors. Something that is just as notable as his play on court is his aggressiveness on the court as well. He punched Patrick Beverly in the stomach one game, was suspended for one game. He was suspended indefinitely by the NBA for some crude behavior, apparently. He confronted Sean Elliott after he tried to bully Tim Duncan. This man is known for being suspended and getting technical fouls. It's sort of become a meme. In the 2013-14 NBA season, Cousins would receive an offer to stay with the Kings for four years and receive $61 million during that time. The following season, he would replace the injured Kobe Bryant in that year's All-Star Game, becoming the first King since Peja Stojakovic and Brad Miller in 2004 to play in the All-Star Game. Cousins would come back the next year and average 26.9 points a game, 1.5 steals, 1.5 blocks, 11.5 rebounds in 35 minutes in 65 games, including a 56-point night that would break Chris Webber's record for most points scored by a Sacramento King in a single game. And when you thought it couldn't get much better from there, he averaged 28 points a game the very next season. He made the All-Star game once again, and during the All-Star break, something groundbreaking happened. Something we have not quite seen before. The Kings traded Cousins and Omri Caspi to the Pelicans in exchange for their former Rookie of the Year, Tyreek Evans. First round pick for the Pelicans, Buddy Heel, and the first and second round picks, along with Langston Galloway. After being traded, Cousins the next season, while paired alongside Anthony Davis, would go on a rampage, averaging over 25 points a game each, looking like they were about to push the Pelicans to the playoffs, Cousins also being selected for another All-Star nod. This is where the story starts to take a bit of a sad turn. After getting a triple-double against the Rockets in that game, Cousins tore his Achilles, which would make him miss the rest of the season and most of next season. The Pelicans would go on to make the playoffs, and they would beat the Trailblazers in the first round, but then would lose to the Warriors in the second round. During the time that Cousins was hurt, he was offered a two-year deal worth $40 million by the Pelicans, which he subsequently declined. After failing to find another deal quite like the Pelicans won, the defending NBA champion Golden State Warriors for a one-year deal that's from the mid-level exception, joining Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Steph Curry to build a potential super team. Cousins would actually put up some very productive numbers in his comeback. He played 30 games, he averaged about 16 points a game on 48% shooting, and started every single game he played in the regular season. And for the first time in 9 years of his NBA career, Cousins had made the playoffs. In the first round, however, in the first couple of games, he tore his quad and missed most of the playoffs. They were able to make it to the finals, 
and he did not have a stellar stat line like you would probably think. Keep this in mind, he was hurt for most of the year. Cousins would sign with the Lakers the very next year for a minimum deal, and as you can see in this footage right here, Cousins tore his ACL during practice and would have to miss the remainder of that season. And by the remainder, I mean the entire season. The Lakers would later waive him. I'm going to ask you this one more time. Go shoot the ball. Go shoot the ball. Can I have one more time? Go shoot the ball. Can I have my time? No, he's not coming. I'm going to make sure I put a bullet on your now, I feel like I should conclude this because I think it holds a little bit of weight. Because he threatened his ex-girlfriend's life, an arrest warrant was issued on DeMarcus Cousins. The charge was later dropped, and it is unknown if this was the reason why the Lakers dropped him back in February. Now, despite what the title says here, I do not think that DeMarcus Cousins is going to remain jobless for, for long. He is currently a free agent, but I do believe when he is 100% healthy, he will be one of the most sought after free agents on the market. He still has the potential to be a highly productive center on any team championship contending. And I do think that the Marcus Cousins will be able to turn his career around, but only time can tell. I'd like to thank you for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Peace, peace. Also, I just want to state, uh, I set a very specific goal in order for me to make this video. And you guys killed it with that, and we got almost 3,000 views in about 4 days. So here's what I'm going to do. If this video gets 25 likes, I will make the next installment of this. Thank you for watching. Peace, peace.